thinking a little more about Sergeant Craig. You know, I was a farm boy, and I know a lot about chickens. Chickens was one of my 4-H projects from time to time, and whether it was a 4-H project or not, we always had a bunch of laying hig hens to have eggs. In fact, we sold eggs part of the time to help pay off our charges for groceries that we didn't raise on the farm. And we always had a rooster or two around, and I know medium-sized roosters, I've known big roosters, and I've known batty roosters. And I'm going to tell you right now that a rooster's a rooster. Now, of course, you get two roosters around and they get to fighting, one of them will establish I'm the rooster. But if a batty rooster is the only rooster, I'm going to tell you those hands pay attention and he is important. He can strut with the best, and he can mate anybody that needs mating. And preen and strut, oh man! And I looked at that Sergeant Craig, and I saw a batty rooster. And I looked at that commanding officer and thought about him, him and that master sergeant and that lieutenant, and thought, yeah, they don't want a contest who's really in charge. They've just abdicated the whole damn thing to crazy Sergeant Craig. They don't even want to pay attention to what's going on. They don't want to know. The banny rooster was on the loose. Well, we weren't a bunch of hens. In fact, he irritated me enough that I had delusions of grandeur once in a while thinking I'd like to meet him in town and go, man, oh, man, oh, see if he's as tough as he thinks he is. And of course, that was a delusional thing. That had been a man against a boy, and that don't usually work out real well. Should have remembered that from raising my dukes to my father. Well, the good part of Jump School and Company K was that the way it's arranged Sergeant Craig took us every morning of the week. I don't remember that we trained in the in the training areas on the weekend. But by golly, Monday through Friday, he would, right after breakfast, call us into session and either march us or run us a double time and so on over to a training area and turn us over to the training, jump school training officers and their enlisted cadre. Oh, treated entirely different. By the way, one of the first things we did was to begin to practice how to fall. That sounds dumb. Also, in that first week or two, we did a lot of practicing knots and how to tie down cargo so that, uh, if necessary, we could perform a function other than just jumping out to fight. Well... When Craig was raising Cain with us, the thing that he liked to pick on us the most about was that we were a sorry representation of the human race, that he couldn't imagine what the world was going on. They would send such mothers' babies, such babies in general, and think that they could become soldiers. We were totally unfit to be in the Army. Then you began to hear the theme over and over as to where we really were going to come up short. Only soldiers that were real soldiers were soldiers who had been in combat. He never bragged about anything specific about where he'd been, but the inference was, I, this fatty rooster, have been in conflict known as combat, and I am therefore superior by far to anything you will ever attain. Well, we'll get back to that much later in this story when I'm an officer and over in Korea in a hospital. was the admissions and dispositions officer. But he, he really, he, he really was rude, crude, disgusting. If he thought he was making us better human beings by the way he treated us, I'd be surprised. I think he had some problems, that little Benny Rooster, and that he somehow made himself feel better by treating us like dirt. 
He didn't run anybody out that I know of, although he did have some people quit. But if, if he was the reason, I was never aware of it. That he was not a very nice person. Let alone a good soldier and a good sergeant.